I'm talking with Christopher Drake, who is the founder of Le Boutique Online. He works with classical Boutique Method for nearly 30 years and co-founded the first authorized Boutique Clinic in the West. He treated nearly 30,000 students. He's the first Western practitioner to get a red diploma from Professor Boutique himself. So hello, Chris. Hello, Irene. How did you find about uh, Boutique? How all this started? It was in the mid 80s, 86, 87, something like that. And that time the Soviet Union was collapsing and there was a lot of interest, business opportunities uh, around the Soviet Union. So I was introduced to this Russian businessman. We had a series of meetings around my investing in Russian business opportunities. They were all very peculiar. I didn't feel very secure with the ideas which they proposed, but I liked the, the people. The people that I met with were quite colorful, interesting people, but their business ideas, well, I couldn't grasp them. The Soviet Union was collapsing and they wanted me to buy a bank. They could get a banking license or cigarette manufacturing all these weird kinds of ideas. And after we went through six or seven proposals, I said that I don't think that I wish to continue looking at any more proposals. And then one of the chats said, we have a technique method, scientific method. I was interested in technology, Russian technology, Soviet technology. He said that we have a technique that reverses all diseases. And I thought to myself, that sounds very peculiar because the Soviet Union is famous for many things, vodka, military stuff, some scientific things and so forth, but it didn't have any reputation that I knew of for anything medical. And I was quite happy to continue talking to these people. And just prior to my meeting them, I sold my interest in a chain of clinics. So I had some familiarity with the medical world. I employed doctors. When he said we have this technique that reverses all diseases, I, well, maybe I wanted to be entertained some more because I had no confidence that they had anything very serious. They spoke about a Russian professor from Siberia who was some kind of genius. They said it's a breathing method, and I thought, hmm, okay, it sounds as crazy as the other ideas they had, actually worse, in my opinion, uh, at that time. So I said, thanks, but, you know, not, not really. Then one of them approached me a few months later, called me again and said, you remember this idea, this method I told you about from Siberia, this Russian medical professor? His protege is now in Australia. Do you want to meet him? So, okay, why not? Now these businessmen were colorful, extremely entrepreneurial bags packed with deals and they were very uh, aggressive. And I met this gentleman by the name of Alexander Stalmatsky. And he was so different from the other chaps. He was a completely different type of personality. He was not friendly, somehow arrogant, rather cold, I would say. Not rude, but not friendly either. It, it fascinated me because I was the one who was going to put in money into this venture. That's what they wanted me for. They didn't want me for my good looks. They wanted my capital to put into some venture. And I thought that's really unusual because normally if you're the one with the money, they're very polite with you and very nice to you. And he was not. And that fascinated me. And I pursued things a little bit. It turns out that it wasn't a cure for all diseases. It was a treatment for a category of diseases called chronic diseases. 
he gave me some outline about it. And it was obvious that he was very intelligent, extremely sharp, but he was not a businessman. I could tell that there was something else there. I was curious. He had been brought out by some other people to Australia. This was all in Sydney, Australia. The business was not doing well, and he's looking for some other option, I guess. He gave me a list of patients or his students, and I did contact them. The trouble is that they were all Russians, Ukrainians or Russians or whatever. So I thought, that seems a little bit weird because you know, all his positive testimonies and they're very diverse kinds of diseases and they all claimed he was like a miracle worker and i thought well you know because we had in the eastern suburbs of sydney a lot of russian immigrants there during the collapse of the soviet union and they obviously were having a hard time new immigrants to a country struggling financially so i could understand them sort of sticking together a bit it didn't really fill me with that much confidence, although one of them was actually an Austrian chap who was a musicologist, quite a senior person in the music world. And his girlfriend was Russian. That's how he came into contact with Stalmatsky. And this chap had very severe asthma. And I began to think that maybe, because he hasn't got any other contacts to share his ideas with, so maybe there's some truth in it. I became a little bit convinced that there's something there. It's authentic. I asked for technical material, which took a long time to come. And then it finally did, and it was all written in Russian. And in the meantime, my relationship with Stalmatsky is deepening a little bit. I must have asked him a thousand questions. I contacted some Russian authorities. They'd never heard of Professor Bottega. Stalmatsky told me that everyone knew about Bottega. He was famous in the former Soviet Union. I contacted the trade attaché, the Soviet embassy, whatever, and I contacted somebody in Russia, and they were like, oh, no, uh, no, maybe, uh, not really, you know. So it seemed a bit odd. Perhaps part of me thought that it was a bit of a psychological approach or some, you know, something like that. And I thought, well, it doesn't do any harm. And I could see that Stalmatsky was having a very difficult time financially. I had contacts in medical centers. And I said to the directors, look, you know, this guy here's got some breathing technique. It probably relaxes people sort of like meditation, yoga, or something like that. And maybe we can give him a little bit of work. They said, yeah, you know, so didn't get many patients. But what was peculiar was some of those patients had diabetes. Some of them had asthma. Some of them had all kinds of serious diseases. And when I followed those up, they said that they had remarkable shifts in their disease. I thought that combined with my previous, you know, thousand questions or more with Stalmatsky made me think that there's something here. It was a big job to get all this Russian literature, chemistry and so forth translated into English. But finally we had that done and I had people look at it and they said, well, we can't say if the method or the technique is authentic in, in terms of its efficacy. But definitely this scientific material is serious. This is not bogus work. This is high level biochemistry and so forth. And then I found out from other people that actually Professor Bottega was very famous in the former Soviet Union. Why was it that the medical fraternity or commercial fraternity was somehow not supportive? That could be explained for other reasons which I won't go into now, but okay. It looks like there's something in this. Mm -hmm. Eventually I became convinced that this thing is authentic. So I decided that we would start a clinic, a teaching clinic. I would get rooms in a medical center in Edgecliff, which is in Sydney. 
I would organize a medical board or a doctor to supervise whatever and start this business with him being the practitioner. Mm -hmm. I looked at it as a business, but I didn't look at it as something that would make money. I mean, how you would have this, I didn't want to be a practitioner. That's for sure. I had no interest. I was an entrepreneur. I was sort of Stalmatsky's patron, if you will. And I got it going and yes, I'd like it to make money to cover its costs and make some profit, but I didn't look at it as a serious business opportunity. Later on, I would, but at that time, not so much. But I thought it was very interesting, very, very interesting. I hadn't really learned the method myself. I'd practiced a little bit, but I wasn't that drawn to it. When did you start immersing yourself in the method? I mean, starting being interested about your own symptoms? and Well, actually, I remember saying to Stalmatsky, because I'm a smoker, I remember saying to him that, I have to quit Camel cigarettes and go on to Marlboro Light or something because I'm getting chest pains from heavy cigarettes. I could feel something there, developing something, not serious, but, you know, something there. Oh, he said, if you practice the method, you can stop those symptoms. I said, okay. And I wasn't very keen on Marlboro Light cigarettes. They've, They've got no taste. And so I did a bit of practice and sure enough, I could continue smoking the brand which I preferred, which I did. I was actually helping him in the clinic. I can't speak Russian and his English was very poor, but I could more or less understand what he wanted the people to do. And he couldn't organize anything. He wasn't an organizing type of person. I ended up doing quite a bit of work there to make sure that the classes operated and that people understood what they had to do. And we had to modify his approach quite a bit because he was, he was a Soviet Union kind of guy. There's no niceties, no normal pleasantries that professionally, you know, he was quite, well, he wasn't actually, his personality was very refined, but he came across as being combatant and a little vulgar for Australians from a professional point of view. So I felt I had to sort of be there to manage things a little bit. I thought I was his patron organizing things, but I became his assistant and I became interested because I thought I knew what would come next and it would change. And I'm wondering why in similar circumstances did you request they do this and that? And in these circumstances, you're now requesting them to do this. And then I began to become interested, intrigued that the method, it wasn't just a method, because a method, this was one of the mistakes we made. Like method implies a methodological approach, like step one, step two, step three, step four, which it is, but there's so many exceptions, you know, according to what medication they take, according to what diseases they have and so forth and so on. The basic idea is there, but it's very involving somehow as a teacher or as someone who's administering this. So I became interested, fascinated, I guess, more than anything else. And I had a spot of, we thought it was colitis, and they thought it was Crohn's disease, and it started on occasionally taking some steroid and so forth, whatever. And I remember complaining about that to Stalmatsky, and he said, why don't you practice the method? Because that will solve it out. And I said, why didn't you tell me that? I mean, we've known each other quite some time now. And he said, well, you never asked. So said, the oh, same answer for all questions. Yeah, well, you know, it was typical, actually. And sure enough, it ameliorated all those problems. I could see the relationship with that disease and my pauses. If my pauses were bigger, the symptoms were less. And if I didn't practice, my pauses were lower, the symptoms were there. And I played around with that for a long time. In the meantime, the business was failing terribly and a television program came to expose us as fraudsters 
But when we encourage them to contact our students to verify our results, they went from trying to expose us to actually supporting us quite strongly and actually attacking those people that were, because we were mainly, in the, back in those days, the focus was asthma. Because Professor Botaker said, start with asthma because it's simple, straightforward. You can get very good results. You won't have too many legal problems because by the time some authorities get upset with you for giving a so-called medical treatment without appropriate licensing and whatever, the patient is already much better. It's hard to argue with a patient who says, I feel much better. We took that advice and focused on asthma. And because of that exposure, the program was called A Current Affair. They ran three episodes of this. They dramatized it quite heavily, but they gave an accurate portrayal. And the method took off because back in those days, it was the most popular program on Australian national TV. We got thousands and thousands and thousands of students and we traveled Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth. We went around the country continuously teaching the method. So the method became known as a treatment for asthma. But I know that you treated thousands of people with uh, different conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, epilepsy, obesity, many, many different varieties of uh, diseases. How did this come about? Well, actually, it was Professor Botega who restricted us only to treat asthma. I mentioned the reasons before. Asthma is a breathing disorder. This is a technique based on breathing, so people can make a connection quite easily. And secondly, the results with asthma are so quick that you're less likely to run into trouble with authorities. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize or not, but if you start opening a business treating serious diseases, you are immediately in the crosshairs of authorities for being some kind of a charlatan and there's licensing issues and you know, medical issues. Right. So we were treating asthmatics and we were getting a lot of positive results and a lot of positive media coverage, a lot. Yes. And then people with emphysema and COPD started to come as well. Why? Because they take asthma medications. If you have emphysema or COPD, you'll get Cerevent, Pulmicort. Bronchodilators, cortisone. Yes. Correct. <clears throat> So they came to the conclusion that this method might be helpful for them. But the way in which you treat them was quite different. And in view of the fact they were there already, then Stalmatsky began to train them. Mm -hmm. And I learned through observation and working under his auspices on how to treat those kinds of diseases, particularly emphysema, COPD, bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis, so forth. And then some of the asthmatics that we had also had other health problems. Some of them had migraines and Stalmatsky could show them how to take off the migraines. But many people have migraines and don't have asthma. But initially it was the asthmatics. Back in those days, chronic fatigue, it was still not really recognized. Some doctors recognized it, but wider society, perhaps a lot of people thought that it was some disease for people who are maybe mentally negative or lazy or hypochondriac or something like that. And I didn't even know what it was. You felt terrible, but there was nothing specific, basically. And you had very low energy. We had this list of symptoms on our patient information form. And so they would tick this fatigue and how many hours they slept and level of energy and all this sort of stuff. And then one thing led to the other. And then there was diabetes mellitus, diabetes type 2. 
diabetes is a hormonal problem. And asthma is also a hormonal problem. That's why they take Pulmicort, or at least steroid can be a part of their treatment. So there was a tenuous relationship between asthma and diabetes. And then, of course, if you look in the medical literature, you'll find that an asthma, spelled A-S-M-A, is any kind of spasming constriction. And angina pectoris used to be called asthma of the heart. Asthma, A-S-M-A. M-A, mm-hmm. Yeah, not A-S-T-H-M-A. And mm-hmm. asthma of the bronchus was called bronchial asthma. Migraine was asthma of the brain. Pancreatic asthma is spasms of pancreas or whatever, you know. So there was this connection. And of course, Professor Boutaker, he developed his approach in the 50s. And before the 50s, or the way he grew up with medicine, there were three kinds of illness, basically, three categories. One was contagious diseases, Mm -hmm. obviously, which you are caught. And second group were congenital, which were something like birth defects and so forth. And the third variety, we now call them chronic diseases, but back in those days, they were known as the diseases of civilization because people who live a less structured, less urbanized life suffer much less with them. And the prevalence for those diseases is in your more, the word civilized is probably wrong because civilized, you think of ballet and Chopin and high class refined activity, but it more refers to the synchronization of society where people eat at the same time, work at the same time, very structured life, which is necessary for a society to develop because you can't have people wandering around doing whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. You can't run a factory or an educational institute or building, construction, manufacturing, and so forth if everybody is working as they feel like it. It's got to be structured. And only recently or relatively recently have they been called chronic diseases. Prior to that, the diseases of civilization. Mm -hmm. And Boutaker claimed that the civilizing effect on society is disturbing the breathing pattern. And that sort of disturbance means that the breathing will deepen. And as a consequence of that, because CO2 is heavier than oxygen and nitrogen, you'll blow off the CO2. And because CO2 regulates so many systems in the organism, has very diverse effects, these diseases are more prevalent amongst more civilized people. Professor Boutaker himself would be furious if someone labeled his technique or his method a method for asthma, because it's not. It's a method to treat chronic hyperventilation syndrome, which he believes, and it, by all accounts, it looks like it's the case that people's breathing has become dysfunctional to various degrees. And as a consequence, the organism is disturbed and a whole range of defense and compensation mechanisms arise according to the person's genetic predisposition, usage of medicamental interventions, environment and so forth, result in these so-called diseases. Mm -hmm. It was a matter of strategy to focus on asthma because Well, it actually did happen. We had a a chap in South Australia who was quite well-known, an asthma doctor, and he actually did make accusations. And also, we got into some legal issues for treating people that are under medical care, giving contrarian advice. But, of course, the legal action didn't go far because the patient was saying... I feel great. I'm not having symptoms. I don't have asthma. I feel fantastic. And that wouldn't go very well in court. I mean, even if you had technically broken the law, the patient who was a severe asthmatic, having an extremely miserable life, 
managed to reverse their illness for a few hundred dollars and we don't prescribe medications we don't de-prescribe we just teach them this technique which they do i mean you can imagine if you took on somebody with a very serious you know bronchi ecstasis or whatever and you began interfering with their treatment the authorities could you know make a mess of you but they don't now because we got so much positive publicity and so many people got good results and we don't prescribe we don't de-prescribe we teach a, an approach and from a physiological perspective and technical perspective they can't really argue with us because the point of Boteca's method is only one thing and that is to bring the respiratory rate to within the physiological norms what's in the textbook the claim is unusual the claim is peculiar but the biology physiology biochemistry behind it is not alternative we're not an alternative method we're placed in that category mm -hmm. but the basis of buteka method is a scientific basis we don't have these views of some energy rising or falling or putting things in balance or any of no it's physiology biology biochemistry this explains the reason behind the disease and it also explains the method of treatment and it also explains the positive results most peculiar really yes yes it is in fact asthma used to be about 95% of our patients and now asthma only represents maybe 50% or less less maybe only 30% mostly it's chronic fatigue there's a lot of migraine some diabetes some asthma coughing with the children it's behavioral issues but asthma i'm not that keen personally on treating asthma because it's a bit boring now i've treated 10,000 or more asthmatics so i try to get the other practitioners to cut their teeth on asthma because it's very demonstrative you learn a lot by treating asthma yes yes i mean you got different kinds of asthma you got this very mild of take a little bit of ventolin take a bit of pomacort maybe sports induced coming and going and so forth but if you deal with what's called status asthmaticus or this very brittle asthma with very low control pores that's a very different disease from the common asthma which is you know these people need hourly nebulizers and very large dosages of steroid and so forth but they also get very good results they get vast improvements mhm mm yes so what's the most important thing buteco method has to offer what would you say about that well obviously for someone who has asthma or allergies or angina or bronchitis or migraines or chronic fatigue or diabetes mellitus or any of these conditions the most important thing to them is that they can actually overcome those disorders but actually i think that there's another thing about the buteka method which is as important or even more important that the more self reliant you are the more confident happier and more at ease you will be i don't mean to criticize doctors they do their job and it's fine but it's a pretty nasty system i'm not blaming anybody it's just become that way for any number of reasons a lot of people describe the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry like some kind of organized crime and the alternative industry is some kind of disorganized crime or whatever so i guess that's true to various degrees it's uh, a pretty nasty and messy world the medical treatment world and the more independent a person can be the more that they can say i'll take care of myself i have the skills i have the knowledge i know how to take care so you can avoid 
going to hospitals, send doctors, and the more you can avoid that world, the better it is. If, of course, you have an accident, then you should really go, you should go to the doctor, you know, because it's you can die from your injuries. So I'm not against the medical world completely, but there's no reason in the world for any person to suffer with asthma, allergies, angina, high blood pressure, bronchitis, diabetes type two, arthritis, schizophrenia, sleep apnea, insomnia. There's no reason for any person to suffer these diseases, including things like anxiety and all this kind of stuff. You can actually do something yourself to overcome these disorders. And that is very self-empowering. You can manage it yourself. Yes. So that I think is probably the biggest thing that the method has to offer the world where mm -hmm. people can become more, um, what's the term? Self-reliant. Self yes. yes. And I think that's a big, big, big deal. I think if I had an accident or if I caught some dreadful contagious disease, I'd be the first one to the doctors or, or to seek medical treatment and so forth. But with any chronic disease, no way. I'm going to manage it myself. I'm going to sort it out myself because I can sort it out better than anybody else for myself. And so mothers, families, older people, they can actually do something. I mean, you can, good diet is important. Uh, getting rest is important. A good environment is important. Avoiding bad habits and so forth. Yes, all these things are good. Exercise. Uh, exercise, yeah, it's very good. Mm -hmm. But this is very directed, extremely potent, and it works whether you are living a healthy lifestyle or not. And so you can avoid vast amounts of unnecessary suffering if you have learned and you understand and you know how to practice, you have the skills. To me, it's the same. I mean, you're in Greece. Yes. I can easily go to Greece, but how much better would my life be in Greece if I could speak Greek? I can live a much, much better life if I can speak Greek. So if you are well-versed in how to maintain your health with a very specific method, which addresses these extremely common chronic health problems, and you can avoid them through your own practice, in your own way, in your own time, that I think is immensely valuable. And you can avoid a lot of unnecessary suffering and expense. Exactly. Thank you very much, Chris, for sharing all this valuable information with us. You're very welcome, Irene. Nice to Thank see you. Thank you so again. much.